Okay, example time. Let's decompose C3 tends to C3 tends to C3 into its irreducible subans, where C3 is the standard representation of SE3. First, we need to figure out what is the weight diagram of this guy. So, first of all, what was the weight diagram of C3? Well, it had a basis E1, E2, E3, and uh, we figured out that, you know, this is a weight vector with weight L1, this has weight L2, and this has weight L3. So let me just draw it down here. It's a triangle. It's these three guys. And if the origin is in the middle. Okay, so that's the weight diagram of C3. So what are the weights for C3 tensor, C3 tensor, C3? Well, the basis for this tensor product is given by EI tensor EJ tensor EK. And I claim that that has weight LI plus LJ plus LK. Why is that? Well, if I act using H theta in this representation, on EI tensor EJ tensor EK, what do I get? Well, you know, this is a Lie algebra element. We need to use the Leibniz rule, the product rule to evaluate this, um, this thing. So we get H theta hitting E1, or e EI, sorry, and then tensor that with EJ tensor EK. Then it misses the E1, hits the, sorry, EI, hits the EJ and misses the EK and then finally we get EI tensor EJ tensor H theta EK. EI, EJ and EK are weight vectors with weight LI, LJ and LK. So what I get is theta I plus theta J plus theta K times E1 tensor EJ tensor EK. Right, because h theta of ei is just theta i ei, for example. Okay, and this is precisely what I get by evaluating li plus lj plus lk on theta. So what does that give me? Um, for example, e1 tensor e1 tensor e1 has weight l1 plus l1 plus l1, that is 3l1, that is 1, 2, 3 along this axis, that's here. Similarly, e2 tensor e2 tensor e2 it's going to give me this weight space and E3 tends to E3 tends to E3 will give me this weight space. Okay, what's next? E1 tends to E1 tends to E2. I go 1, 2 along because I've got two powers of E1 and then once in the L2 direction. So this guy here will, so th this one remember is E1 tends to E1 tends to E1. This guy will come from E1 tends to E1 tensor E2. It'll also come from E1 tensor E2 tensor E1. And it'll also come from E2 tensor E1 tensor E1. All of these have weight 2L1 plus L2, which is this point here. So this is going to be a three-dimensional weight space. Make that three bigger. Similarly, this point is going to be a three-dimensional weight space. This will come from sort of E1 tends to E2 tends to E2 and other such combinations. So that'll be three-dimensional. These outer ones will just be one-dimensional. I'm just going to keep the dimensions in blue to distinguish them from all the other pieces of notation. Um, okay, other vertices that I get are here here, 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 and the origin. All these guys around the edge have threes, except for the outermost ones, which have one. And in the middle, this corresponds to things like uh, E1, tensor E2, tensor E3. And cyclic permutations, or not cyclic, just any permutation of 1, 2, 3 here. So E2 tends to E1 tends to E3, etc. So there's six possible things you could stick in the middle. Let's just move 
that and write a six there instead. Okay, so that middle blob is, is a six dimensional weight space. Is this uh, everything? Let's count. So the total dimension here I've got is one plus three plus three plus one plus three plus six plus three plus three plus three plus one, which I claim is 27. Uh, I did pause the video there to check that. And 27 is three times three times three, which is the dimension of this tensor product. C3 tends to C3 tends to C3. So this is everything. These are all the basis vectors accounted for. But look at this, this is not an irreducible representation, right? Irreducible representations are supposed to have ones around the boundary and then the number increases as you go inward. So this is not an irreducible representation. We need to decompose it into irreducible sub-representations. So the way I do this is exactly like I did for SU2. I'm going to pick a highest weight vector. In other words, something um, that's kind of an extremal point for this uh, polygon. So unfortunately, there's no uh, unique way of doing this, right? Because, you know, what's to distinguish the vertex over here from the vertex up here or the vertex down here? I need to make some choice here. But I claim that I really need to pick a vertex rather than a, an edge point or, or the middle point to start from. Um, so I'm going to pick this as my highest weight. And then this is going to span a highest weight sub-representation. If I just apply my roots uh, E, I, J's, I'm going to uh, get a sub-representation starting from this guy. And then I'm going to take its orthogonal complement and see what's left. Okay, but there is a unique irreducible representation whose highest weight is uh, three zero, right? This is three k equals three l equals zero. Uh, let's draw the diagram down here somewhere. Um, so just rejigging things a bit. Uh, one, two, three, this is my highest weight. I apply the vial group action, one, two, three. I end up here, I end up here, I get a triangle. Let's draw the triangle. Uh, and then I end up with dots here, 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 and at the origin. What are the dimensions of these weight spaces? Well, the outer ones will all be ones. And then if I were to strip off that triangle of ones, what will be left with is, is a single point in the middle. And because it's a triangle I'm stripping off, the dimension doesn't increase anymore. It's just still one. So this is the, um, this is the weight diagram for the unique irreducible representation starting with uh, three zero. So I'm gonna use some notation now. I'm gonna call this uh, gamma three zero. So in other words, in general, I'll have gamma KL will be the unique irreducible representation with highest weights KL1 minus LL3. So this is the thing I'm stripping off. Let's go back up and have a look at what I'm taking it from. Uh, I'll copy all this and move it down. Okay. Right. So this is the uh, the diagram I'm taking away this triangle from. So what happens? Maybe I'll, I'll do this in orange. Okay, so here's my representation. I'm supposed to take the orthogonal complement of this sub-representation. Well, this weight space up here is one dimensional. When I take away the triangle that's going to go down to zero dimensional so that's not going to be there anymore similarly this vertex is not going to be there this vertex is not going to be there they're all one dimensional all the other weight spaces are going to decrease dimension by one because i'm stripping off a one from each of them so these threes are going to turn into twos and the six is going to turn into a five 
Okay, so this is the weight diagram for the orthogonal complement of gamma 30 with respect to some invariant Hermitian inner product. Once again, I'm not going to explain why there's a Hermitian inner product that's invariant. It uses the Unitarian trick, just like we did for U1. Okay, so let's uh, redraw this diagram a bit further down. Uh, so we have uh, a hexagon with two, 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 two around the boundary. That's the dimensions of the weight spaces and a five dimensional weight space over the origin. So again, I'm going to try and extract a highest weight subrepresentation, and I'm going to pick this one here. Uh, so this is going to give me a copy of gamma one one. In fact, it's going to give me two copies of gamma one one because there are two uh, different highest weight vectors I could pick here, and each one's going to give me a copy of gamma one one. What is gamma one one? Well, let's figure it out. So one one is here. If I act using the vial group. I get these six vertices. If I uh, add in all the other lattice points, I just get the origin. And I'm supposed to have ones around the outside. One, 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 one. And then because I'm removing a hexagon, I'm left with two in the middle. Okay, so I'm stripping off two copies of this. So these twos will become zeros and what's left in the middle will become a one because five minus two times two is one. So in total, what have I done? I have removed one copy of gamma three zero, two copies of gamma one one, and what I'm left with is just one one dimensional weight space with weight zero. And that is the trivial representation. So overall, what I get is gamma, uh, no, sorry, C3 tends to C3 tends to C3 is isomorphic to gamma 30 plus gamma 11 one plus gamma 11 one plus the trivial representation C3.